Next, we are moving to the Camas City Council Ward 1, Position 2. And this evening, I'd like to welcome Melissa Smith and Amelia Brazier for, um, thank you for coming this evening to share with us your thoughts. As you've noticed, we have about a one, a one minute uh, introduction and then a minute and a half to answer the questions and I'll alternate who starts. And we'll start with Amelia, if you're ready to start. We'll give you a minute to introduce yourself. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you to the League of Women Voters for having us and also to Melissa for joining me here. <laughs> uh, of course, she would be here, but um, I decided to run for city council um, because I love Camas. I moved here uh, about eight years ago after a friend introduced me to the area and I spent a couple of years getting to know it while my husband finished up um, law school. Um, I, I love the, the open natural spaces. I love the schools. I love the community. I love the, the feel of the town. And I want to be on city council so that I can help to make sure that the current direction that we're going is going to help retain that. Thank you. Ms. Smith? Hi. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you to the League of Women Voters for putting on this forum again. I, let's see, third generation, been here forever, graduated from the old Camas High School, um, was appointed to council in 2004, but I started volunteering prior to that to get into um, doing things with the city. My background was in purchasing, manufacturing. I used to travel overseas to China, things like that. So I knew a lot that way. So I'm very fiscally conservative, but liberal in other ways. I'm kind of in the middle. And um, I just would like to ask for your vote again for this year. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Smith, we'll start with you for the first question. Finding housing in Camas can be difficult. Yes. How can Camas go about providing more affordable housing and more types of housing, uh, perhaps more multi-unit housing? Sure. Last year we developed, um, it's, it's on our website, it's the Camas Comprehensive uh, 2035 plan. And in that, we outline more um, multi-homes, multi aging in place. People want to age in place. They want to stay in the community that they've grown up in, lived in. And we need to make places that are more affordable for folks. So that's in our plans going forward. So that's what we're working on. But in the interim, if there's a real critical, then we refer people to the Vancouver Housing Authority to help out. Thank you. Well. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Ms. Brazier? Um, yeah, so in taking a look at the 2035 plan, there are some, some good things in there going forward about um, how to deal with this. Um, I think that um, we could look to some other communities that have done this well. Um, I was looking around in Colorado, has had a couple of cities that have addressed this issue in different ways, including things like um, trying to actually help um, remove some barriers of community perception to multi-unit housing through identifying, um, talking about individual cases, um, and also trying to make those units um, fit in and really match the current areas. Also creating housing that um, is it within um, walking distance or busing distance to um, things that the people need, um, like grocery stores, is actually um, one way to help reduce costs for a family if perhaps they can't afford a car or something like that. So that is something that I think the city could help to address. Thank you. Uh, for the next question, uh, I will ask Mr. Brazier to Miss Miss Ms. Brazier, excuse me, Ms. Brazier to start. What would you propose on a community level to help address some of the social problems, such as homelessness and youth suicide and other issues facing the community? Yeah. So actually, this is really near and dear to my heart. I my. Um, <laughs> undergraduate degree was in psychology and um, before I had my son, I was in the middle of getting my doctorate in clinical psychology. My mother is a mental health care nurse practitioner and I have multiple friends that have dealt with suicide um, ideation and attempts. Um, 
I think that this is a public health issue that really does need to be addressed both um, in things like churches and um, community level, but also within a governmental level by um, looking at evidence-based methods. Um, also, we're really lacking in crisis intervention services in the area. Even in Vancouver, um, it can take two weeks for somebody with suicidal ideation to get treatment. Um, and that is a big problem. Um, getting out there that, um, for the high school level, especially I think, and the younger level, that there is a text, a text crisis line. And that's a really good thing for to know, to know, and just so everybody can know, the number for that is 741741, and you text HOME to them, and somebody will immediately get to you. Thank you. Uh, um, I'll tackle the homeless first. There's a lot of church involvement, um, you know, working with homeless folks and and other entities. Camus really doesn't have its own agency. We collaborate with the rest of the county and refer people who have homeless issues. I, I agree with Amelia um, regarding suicide. That has become very prominent in society right now. And if you'll notice through town, there's little signs, little white signs that says you're not alone, you know, you are loved, things like that. Um, the mayor just recently did a, um, my mind's gonna go blank here, but he did a, a thingy, I'll use the classic term here, <laughs> a couple of months ago with a couple that has a suicide group because their son committed, did pass away from suicide. And so we're working more close and becoming more aware of what is going on out there in the community. Sorry. Thank you. Ms. Smith, how does uh, upkeep of existing neighborhoods compare with the needs of, of developing neighborhoods? And how is this balanced across the community, um, the livability of needs of different neighborhoods? How is that balanced from the sure. council level? We have, because there's a lot of older sectors of, in Camas that aren't um, homeowner associations, they might be old neighborhood associations, but there's not a lot of statutory things for them. We did a survey several months back, and the top priorities were, you know, um, the amenities, the parks, the green <coughs> spaces, um, safety, the police, which we've just our full staff, we just hired three more that are going through the academy. And I'm sorry, what was the other part of that? Just question? a question of how you oh, how you balance the, um, the code enforcement was a big concern on the survey that people want us to get more be more proactive about helping the neighbors keep their homes up to date or looking nice as best as possible. And we need to work on ways of either waivers or some type of help, you know, volunteer help of some sort. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ms. Brasher? Um, I think that those are all really good points. Um, I, th this actually is one of the reasons that I decided to run um, because right up near where I live, um, it, which had been, you know, in the works for a long time, but there, the livability of my area was really, really negatively affected by a current housing development that is put up there. And I found it very concerning when I go walk around Lily Loop now, I overlook, uh, I mean, just, I don't really know how to describe it other than what seems like disaster to me and to many of the people that I know that live up there. You know, there are houses there that now are getting cracks in the walls and flooding in their crawl spaces. And I know that's only one area, but I think that it's, it's an example of um, why I think that the planning needs to be really well thought out. And I think that also, we, you know, we have lots of infrastructure that's going to need to be built um, coming up. Obviously, that's a part of balancing this, this new um, 
influx of housing. Um, but that, that was one of my main concerns. Thank you. What uh, do you think are the two biggest challenges that Camus will face in the next five years? Um, well, I think this affordable housing and the creation of new houses um, along side by side with um, the infrastructure and services needs um, such as like, the police services and um, keeping the older structures like in this downtown area continuing to look nice and um, finding ways for, for the town to match and have it a feel that we all enjoy and love. Thank you. Ms. Smith? Um, the biggest challenges I see over the next five years is right now we are in a growth spurt. People may like that or not, but it's a mandate from the state that we have to fulfill. And in these development, and the one that Amelia uh, spoke about up by hers, the Lily Loop, that was a piece of property that had been purchased and the builder had 10 years to do something with it and he was right at that. So unfortunately these other developments came in and built and saw the, and I had the same thing happen in my neighborhood. And it's just, own, homeowners need to do their due diligence of where they're moving to and what's the potential that can be around them. They need to be educated and the city needs to do a better job of communicating what's going on and getting folks to <clears throat> talk to us. But um, for the next five years financially is getting some more revenue streams. That's one of my biggest concerns is how are we gonna pay, f sustain everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ms. Smith, Camus is experiencing significant growth, uh, residential growth, as you mentioned. What challenges come with this growth, and what specific recommendations do you have for addressing them? The growth? Well, uh, the biggest thing is we need to make sure that we have a reserve fund for maintenance of roads. We need to be able to service everybody. Um, you know, water, garbage, police, everything. And it, it's going to be tough. But the thing I'm proud of for Camus is that with some of these big developments, we do development agreements, a master plan. And so there are multiple, multiple checks that going through the process. And this can take years. And these are real partnerships with some of these developers that really want to do right by the citizens and make it as livable and as pleasant as possible. Thank you. Ms. Brazier? Sure. Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Certainly. Uh, Camus is experiencing significant residential growth. So what challenges come with this and what specific recommendations do you have for how they could be addressed? Okay. Um, yeah, I think... Um, one of the things is the, the livability, balancing that livability. Um, one is uh, making sure that the services that Melissa had mentioned are able to keep up and that we do have the revenue coming in. Um, I think that um, if we can bring in some additional um, retail businesses um, as well as, oh, and affordable housing, I think also, that, that's one that we kind of already touched on, but um, although we're growing, it seems to be that it's maybe not at quite the pace that um, that's up keeping, uh, keeping up with people wanting to come here. So um, if we can create some, some situations in which the housing can um, match um, that growth, I think that we would be on the right track. Thank you. And for the minute closing, you might touch on what your goals are or why you're running for city council, and we'll start with you, Amelia. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you again for hosting us. Um, I decided, like I had mentioned, I decided to run because um, of some of my concerns about the way that, that we're growing, and I 
I really like the um, 2035 plan, which Melissa, I believe, was part of putting together. Um, and I, I just have some concerns about some of the places that's being put into place. Um, the, I think that trying to retain as much of our natural space as we can and put into place um, houses in areas that have access to things that are really needed by families like grocery stores and, and things like that would be really useful. Um, I, I really want to see this city be a place that my kids want to come back to if they, have, if they decide to go to college um, or that they decide to stay in. And this is a place I want to live um, into retirement and I would like to see it stay as beautiful as it currently is. Thank you. Ms. Smith? Thank you. And again, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Um, I would like to stay on city council because we have a lot coming up, especially next year with there will be a new mayor next year and we just need some continuity. There's, there's a little unsettling, you know, for employees, you know, not knowing what's going to happen or who's going to be in place, things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's good to have rapports with the frontline folks. Um, I also, I just love what I do. I love doing the research. You know, I uh, don't always agree with what everybody says, you know. Like I said, fiscally conservative, try to, it's your money, it's not mine. Well, I mean, it is a little mine too, but <laughs> mainly it's yours. So I really try to take care of it as best as I can. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the candidates for joining us this evening and giving the public an opportunity to hear from both of you. And also thank you for stepping up to put your name on the ballot and sure. serve our community. Appreciate uh, the time and energy you put into that. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.